Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, like fire. A terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate. We're almost at the end of the year, but it's as though our work has only just begun. We keep at it in the interest of a better society. I'll be setting things in motion by tackling a topic that is on a lot of minds. I've called it last man standing. Bolaho is no less topical. He has opted to alert us to the other side of the story regarding the not so small matter of a $30, $30 billion loan request. Uche is shocked at the extent to which some would go to attain perceived beauty goals. Hmm. Tubosu is on the team for the first time he makes his debut by speaking of the Nigerian brand. I wonder how many of us have given this much thought. Libras articulates the anomaly of the so-called security vote that appears to have created an open door to daylight robbery. Hmm. Prepare for a lot of exposition on this edition after the break. I'm increasingly aware of the weight of the expression, the box stops with me. Last man standing. Showray's release was recently ordered for the third time, I believe, by the courts. However, in the full view of the cameras and witnesses, the DSS forcefully manhandled him and apparently rearrested him. Even Nigerians who have no personal affiliation to Showray can tell that at this point something has seriously gone awry as concerns the dignity of the judiciary, when the DSS are able to forcefully undermine the same. No explanations given, not that any would be acceptable. Who are the DSS? What power do they wield? Are they above the law? The simple answer is that they must be acting on a higher, more audacious authority. The buck for such an abuse against judicial authority should rest squarely on the shoulders of the presidency. More disheartening is that this callous disdain for the rule of law is happening at a time when we have a senior advocate as the vice president. Commentators have asserted that new precedents are being set by those in authority as regards lawlessness, and yet it appears that those who have a voice and should speak out remain silent. The presiding judge should at least charge the DSS and those they represent with contempt of court, liberals would advise. The Senate and House of Representatives should debate the issue as a matter of urgency. I hear at least someone has raised an issue on that, since it goes towards fundamental rights to a fair trial. It goes towards the civil liberties of every national of Nigeria, whom they claim to represent. It goes towards upholding the rule of law. This is essential as persistent corrosion of this basic foundation of societal law and order could inevitably lead to the house crashing down on all of us. We all should not tire of raising our voices in condemnation, however we can. I recently watched a movie whereby a single police officer stood against an organized syndicate of dirty cops and he triumphed. I know that's the movie, but you know, he was the last man standing. You and I get to be the last man or woman standing against injustice. The question is not if we will lend our voices to the struggle, but rather how we will make our voices count. To stay silent is simply not an option at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I know. What do I say? Please say something. Um, <laughs> You're part of the judiciary that yeah. I've been raped yeah. and part of the law side of things. <laughs> yeah, because um, I, I think um, we fought a civil war too early, too soon. And then, so any attempt to stand for your right, people are quick to remind you of, um, of the consequences. And like Fela once said, I know one die, Papa did for house, Mama did for house. Um, I won't build house, I won't enjoy. And, and, and so you find out that, that um, it's like they say, it's only in Nigeria that, only in Nigeria you will push to the war. And rather than revolt, he would break the war 
and you know still run far from you. Mm. You know, even goats will revolt because I, I really don't know why. And so the government understands all of these things. And that's why they keep doing these things that they do. This is not the first time. Remember that the military, the judiciary were seriously abused, mm. though not this daring. Okay. Um, and then, um, if you remember Ayo Fayoshe in Ekiti, um, about a few years ago also, his, his talks invaded the courts. Even I learned also a judge was assaulted in the mm -hmm. open day court. Mm -hmm. And nothing happened. Those people that condemned it at that time, that's the unfortunate part of it. Mm -hmm. Those that condemned it at that time are the ones that are praising this DSS invasion. Mm -hmm. Because now it is... They're working uh, in their favor. Really? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Are there people praising the invasion? Or maybe yes. they're keeping quiet. Yes. They are well, giving excuses, mm -hmm. depending on, on the side you support. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, like one of it's the, quite unfortunate. One of the but quickly, what I think... Nobody will stand for the judiciary, but the judiciary itself. Oh, really? Yes. Um, it's been too, we've been too quiet to wait for somebody else to come stand for the, the judiciary. The NGC and the NBA need to come together and say, you know what? What's the essence of giving an order when you know I've been issued that it will not be obeyed? Yeah. What's the essence of going to a court to get an order when you know that such orders will not be obeyed? That from now on, we will done too until we all sit down yeah, exactly. and address this issue. You know, rather than this pretense of, you know, let's say we cannot be like them. If I were sure, I would refuse to stand trial from now on. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because yeah. what's if the essence? You remain in prison. It's better, it's better because now. whether you, whether now You're the court gives money. order. <laughs> so what is the guarantee that if the same court discharges and acquit him tomorrow, that they, they will mm. be? So what are we talking about? Wow. The same court, Justice Taiwo Taiwo, that ordered that he should be held for 45 days. After the expiration of the 45 days, mm. now say, release him. Mm. And I the DSS were warning Justice Taiwo Taiwo. Mm. You know, so if I were him, I'd just say, you know what? I would rather just remain here. Let me remain here so that the whole world will know that I am here. Mm. I will stand trial until I'm sure that I'll be given fair here. Absolutely. Do you, do you think Absolutely. that will work? Is yes, it, it will. Too. It's a protest I, in I, itself. I, I hope so. Um, when, when I think about the old mix, something is seriously wrong mm -hmm. yeah. and like liberio said the judiciary has a role here and i believe the rest of us do too in, in certain way in our commentaries and if, if there are public protests that we can join to register our dissatisfaction with that issue that's his uh, speech the least place <laughs> that i that i expected result I'm, I'm, i may be an outlier in this matter is to say the people who are eating on the table will be speaking while they are eating. I don't think we're going to get public condemnation from people who are in government. Mm. No, it doesn't. You do, it, not even in the US. Do you get the Republican is, is coming out to come and you know, talk about Trump? You don't get it. Well, sometimes you do. So you step out of yeah, that. Sometimes, 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 sometimes when, you when, 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 yeah, when they, they don't. Are, when there are extreme situations, mm. you would get um, Republicans or, or even yeah. party Democrats members to come out yeah. and no, 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 no. condemning Yeah, it. to say that this particular Open. thing is wrong. Mm. Um, if they will follow you through, is another conversation. Going to the court to, to go and try and arrest him just looked like, you know, like there was no thinking that went into trying to arrest anybody. Like it was, it looked very, very brazen. And mm. I continue to be very, very concerned about that because it looks like all the security agencies have a, a particular MO, disregard the rule of law in arresting yeah, people. But the, the SARS will pick you up without allowing you to contact anybody. Yeah. The police will, you will harass you. Um, the military guys will harass you at any given opportunity, even in traffic or but anywhere. But why do they you find think you. that they're able and to now do the that? Who is giving them that. the authority to do that? So I also think that... It's because you're still it's separating... the body language. You're still separating <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. from the presidency, which is not the case I think there's, there's a rot... There is no platform. separation right now. The DSS, as far as I'm concerned, is not um, an independent agency anymore. It's acting on orders and it's carrying them out. They report to someone. Yes. Mm. And, and for them to be brazen like that, I think we're finally getting to a, a point where we can now see that <laughs> everything has pretty much broken down. Yes. And, uh, you know, we've been talking about the uh, rule of law and how, you know, the government is not obeying them, court orders, you name it. And now, finally, they've invaded the courts, assaulted 
assaulted somebody, rearrested somebody, they had to chase the judge away or she ran away. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's gone crazy. It's, crazy, yeah. it's gone crazy. Well, I, I think, think sorry, I just wanted to say that the positive for me out of all this is that you're beginning to see stirrings of a coalition, like at least you've seen the civil society organizations, mm -hmm. 200 of them are, are giving an ultimatum. You see people coming out to make statements that, you know, so me, I'm beginning to see what looks like. Quickly, you know? what did he the, say? the governor Nothing. of Ondo uh, State, who's also an APC, had condemned this. Um, and also he has asked the MB and the NGC mm -hmm. to stand up for yes, the rule of law. That's positive, yeah. yeah very and, positive. And, and on the issue of whether he's guilty or not, it's let a different the court story. decide that. That's I mean, a different so my, my, my point about that is even from the um, point of view of you ha there's no justification for the harassment. There is absolutely no justification yeah, for the it's harassment. It's almost like they're playing into the hands yes, of the people. Yes, exactly. Anyway, no um, as citizens of a nation, we all have our part to play. Bolanho is set to play his part in challenging the single story as regards a certain controversial loan after the break. You are watching The Advocate on PLUS TV Africa. Storytelling surely comes into its own with the art of presenting a 3D perspective. The single story of Nigeria's borrowing plan. It was Chimamanda Adichie who warned us of the danger of a single story. The ongoing discussions about Nigeria's borrowing plan of 30 billion US dollars for critical infrastructure reminds one of this danger. It is true that the absolute number of our debt is low for a nation as big as ours. It is also true that our debt to GDP ratio is very low. Thus, we should be able to borrow if we want. This story is a favorite for government. However, it is just one story and there is another. The other part which government doesn't like to talk about is how is this debt going to be repaid? Debts are repaid from revenue. And the government itself had mentioned over and over again that our revenue is very poor. As it is today, depending on how much of the projected revenues we achieve, the existing debt service could be anything, anything between 25% and 60% of the entire revenue. The rest is barely enough to pay salaries. Debts are not repaid from GDP. They are repaid from revenues which we don't have. This is the conundrum. The true solution to a problem does not lie in tell telling only part of the story. Rather, we should put all the cards on the table. My advocacy is that government should not just present a borrowing plan, it should also present a supporting revenue plan, detailing how it intends to repay. Yeah, I mean, how can anyone disagree with what you're saying? I think Africa, we, we've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese looking to invest. We've seen what they've done in other countries. If you don't repay your debt, they will just take colonize over. you. Yeah. They will take over important infrastructure, important things. Which countries have this? Um, Where's, Kenya. No, it's Kenya, Kenya, Kenya. It's Zambia or Mozambique. They're places. If you Google it, you'll find it. They've done quite a bit. They've taken over their, their, their seaports or their airports or whatever. So the dangers are there. And so whenever I hear that Nigeria is borrowing, my heart already you know, gives up because I just know that A, we'll borrow the money. We're not to get the revenue. is We're supposed to plow that money we borrowed mm -hmm. into whatever it is that we're trying to build that will generate that revenue. But if we're not doing doing that, where's that revenue going to come from? So now what they've done is they've decided that the only way to get revenue in Nigeria is uh, the crude oil 
or taxing. Yeah. So that is really it. So we now know that it's either we are, the, we're the ones that are going to suffer or future generations are going to suffer. But, but, but um, really, so, sorry, mm -hmm. um, thank God. I wanted to talk about this this week. <laughs> um, I also wanted to detail all of the borrowings mm -hmm. at every time from 1999 to date. Uh, you find out that it's always, like you said, it's always very convenient for government to give you a one-sided story, story of the borrowing plan. And then we also need to also have a clear picture of the internally generated mm -hmm. revenue, both from crude, from taxes, from the seaports. So let's, and then just oppose them mm -hmm. with the infrastructure. Yes, we have infrastructural deficit. And like the African Development Bank has said, we need a hundred billion. Uh, dollars annually to be able to bridge the gap. Like wow. But what we are basically do, doing, like um, I had listened to um, uh, Chief Henry Boyo, God rest his soul, just died, um, and uh, this former CBN Deputy Governor um, uh, Melifa. Um, and that what we are basically doing is to borrow to feed, mm -hmm. borrow to service, mm -hmm. you know, recurrent expenditure. And, and so that's why you still have that infrastructure gap. And that's why when government tells you they want to borrow, the, the nobody tells you the repayment plan. Not too long ago, a president came and said, look, he needed approval for $1 billion to buy arms to fight uh, uh, Boko Haram. $1 billion is spending one, uh, 365 naira to a dollar is 1 billion naira per day. Mm. And nobody's talking about Imagine all of this. That. All of this money will be repaid. It will be repaid. Whether we like it or not. And so if, like you said, if the, yes, if the, mm -hmm. if the revenue is not commensurate to what you are borrowing. No matter how big you are, you, you will just continually be in debt so, so, and so, someday so, you'll be bankrupt. So, okay, so uh, there are two things that come to my mind. One is, even if they told me that they were going to tell, declare their revenue, would I even trust the figures? So, for example, they, there's a recent thing I heard about, the Open Treasury. They're trying to sell us a sweet I don't know if you've come across that, okay. where you can go online and you can see all the monies coming in and out, opentreasury.com. Yeah. The government are trying to offer us a palliative in the and light of any the amount whole... Spend every but day. if you don't trust, if people are awarding yeah, the themselves pension, and, and, and you know that their heart is really to secure themselves and not you, mm. would you still trust them? Even if they told you, isn't it the figures they put on that exactly. database that you have yeah, to assess them on? So, you know, if they're going to buy a house secretly, are they going to declare that? You mm. will never know that. So that's a problem for me. So even when we're talking about the government declaring figures. I would rather there was an objective like JP Morgan Chase, an external body who would supervise mm -hmm. this, this so-called transparency procedure. Boring. So I'm not against boring because for the, in the short term, I don't really see how we're gonna raise the funds we need, mm -hmm. but I just, I'm against them being the ones declaring the, I just, I just feel unfortunately, we don't trust them enough. So even if we they gave us, give us figures, them. we don't trust yeah. the figures. Because their heart is not to be transparent, their heart is not to be accountable. So mm. they'll find a way to mm. cheat even mm. the, the so-called system. So what we're looking for more now is, okay, let's deal with the short term, let them be allowed to borrow. But long term, let's now start saying, why is it that we're not generating revenue? In the past, we used to. It's because of this centralized system. I think we've dealt with this before. Let's find a way to now encourage, you know, independent in states to generate revenue for themselves. Well, what, you know, what, 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 what I hear you say yeah. is, we should allow them to borrow. Yes, for the short term. And then we'll, we'll <laughs> think later, yeah. later, yeah. Think later. about think, how yeah. the revenue will come. That is not how no, it we works. Can, I mean, no, 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 I have no, 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 two major problems. Yeah. Is one, the size of our reoccurring expenditure. I think that that's one thing that has to be fixed. You can't have, um, an, you can't have hemorrhage, you're bleeding and they're just pumping blood into, into you, it's waste. Yeah. Okay. So we're already spending money in the wrong That's direction. Right, the and then we have to first get that straight because any money we borrow, we'll spend it in a bad way. So I think those are the things that, you know, this over bloated size of government and all of that, we have to of fix course. that first, yes. reduce. I mean, in companies, when you're trying to increase profitability, one of the first thing you try to do is to reduce cost. Yes. Even if you're going to be innovative or anything, is to find a way to reduce cost. Yeah. We have to reduce the cost. And governance. Let, 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 me, let me add which is, which something is the second part. Should I shock yes. you that the size of government employ, employ, uh, employees, in federal government is about 1.2 million, but Less than a hundred thousand are actually civil servants. So wow. that's the ghost workers thing again. <laughs> that's crazy. Okay, I guess I guess, <laughs> I guess that, that says it all. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. As they say, honesty is the best policy, especially when it comes to matters of finance. Since numbers never lie. After the break, 
which just seems to be encouraging us to be true to our natural color. We hear the expression, true beauty lies within, but how many of us believe it lies closer to the surface? I wonder. Bleached babies. <laughs> yeah, that is my topic today. If you didn't come across the video of an African woman in a bath filled with some chemicals, having the skin on her body peeled to instantly reveal whiter skin, then count yourself lucky. I was shocked to the bone and could hardly watch. Why would anyone put themselves through such a dangerous process for the sake of beauty? Skin bleaching is one manifestation of folks trying to get power and privilege aligned with whiteness. We're seeing folks attempt to be perceived as having more value because of their complexion. This was said by Yaba Blay, a researcher at North Carolina Central University. The dangers of bleaching have been well publicized, so it's rather hard to plead ignorance as an excuse. But just for clarity, an official from the Nigerian Drug Control Agency had this warning. These chemicals damage respiratory, kidney, and reproductive systems. They cause cancer, affect the nervous system, deform unborn babies. Some of you may remember my earlier advocacy on the bleaching phenomenon. Well, I'm about to reveal an even more alarming trend in bleaching. African mothers are now bleaching their baby's skin. Yes, you heard me. This was revealed by a shocking 2018 AFP report. There is also the well-documented story of how Dr. Isima Sobandi came across a two-month-old baby boy who was brought to a health center with very painful boils all over his body. On interrogation, the mother admitted to mixing a steroid cream with shea butter, which she applied on her son's skin to make him whiter. This madness must stop immediately. Thanks to various movements, such as mel melanin popping, which aims to celebrate and highlight the beauty of black skin, recent songs like Brown Skin Girl by Beyonce featuring Wizkid, and social media awareness on the dangers, the halt to this very ugly, disfiguring, and life-threatening trend has begun. But it will take much more to change a mindset that believes anything white is superior. African women, be proud of your skin. Not only is it beautiful to look at, but the melanin serves a very important purpose in the fight against skin cancer. Yeah, I mean, uh, quickly, because I know when, um, I remember I had a neighbor once, and I mean, my children are a little fair skin, some of them, mm. and she was saying, oh, you know, what do you put on their skin? And I was wondering, I thought it was really bizarre, you know, why is she <laughs> bothered? I said, I just wash them with the same standard soap, I don't put anything on them. Because she was wondering what to do with her sons who were not you know, they Imagine were, that. And, you know, and so when I hear that, I find it really interesting. I mean, I was happy to see that uh, Miss Universe, this South African mm. lady, I know she's not dark skinned, but at least she had short yeah. hair. I feel the media have a, a massive role to play in recycling these stereotypes of what yeah. is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've never understood the obsession with fair skinned people because I just don't get it. You know, sometimes I say I wish I were darker skinned because I hate that whole, you know, bandwagon you know, when everyone thinks this, this is what it is. Mm. Yeah, I want to be different because I, I just don't think that we should all have a standardized way of appreciating something. So even in um, the media, you find that, oh, makeup, a certain type of makeup is considered the standard. I say, I beg, let me be. You, you know, but really, <laughs> let me be. But you be because not I don't want, and I feel women are, the, I, I, I know people bleaching, cost, I know bleaching can happen in men, mm. but I feel oh, women that tend to suffer no, the handicap cause. You no, know, but liberals, I feel women are handicapping just. themselves because a lot of times women want to be taken seriously. But when you major on the externals, how will anyone take yeah, you seriously? Because that's it. Everything to women now is make believe. Well, sorry, before I go on, when you talk about Yaba I thought it was a Yaba. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, everything these days it's about make believe. Mm. Fake eyelashes, fake uh, face, fake everything. Fake, fake everything. And, and, and so, and so when you now believe, when you take off, and then to cap it all, when we talk about um, um, what do you call it now, uh, beauty. It has to be sexual beauty and all of those mm. things. You wear skin things, expose, you know. So when you the emphasis is on the outside, mm. and so everybody would want to do anything enhance that will outside. enhance that outside. Just like a, a man in Nigeria. But, a but, Nigerian sorry, man me, would drink anything, provided it says it helps 
you know, the reproductive the libido. Uh, the libido. But yeah. we're no, focusing on adults now. My major problem, because I've dealt with the adults. adults. Why are you the bleaching kids. your baby? Like, yeah, because, 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 because you yeah. believe. Yeah. I don't even yes. know. Yes. You want to help the baby. Would the baby start bleaching itself at six? Or you want the baby to struggle with what you struggle with. I mean, to bleach as an adult. So you want to start it quite early. But the baby will keep bleaching because there's maintenance bleaching from what I understand. You know, the only thing I have to say is this. The only thing I had to say before was about maintenance. I, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not light-skinned. I happen to even have um, a mother and a sister who is fairly light-skinned. And what I usually tell people is that, you know where you are light-skinned, you are more maintenance. Yes. Like, no, why no, are you, no, why, no, why? No, don't push that no, 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 I'm like, no, 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 no
The media should do a better job in bringing enlightenment. When there is awareness, revolution will come naturally because the people will be wise to take a stand and also vote the right people into leadership. The bigger problem is the individual Nigerian who helps, who helps them to rig elections. It is the individual, be it the thugs, police, army, etc. They're all Nigerians. When the people are enlightened, things will change. Also, Agunwoke says, my people, the good ones are few. Remember majority carry the vote in that parliament. Politics is a game of thugs. It's stirring a lot of reactions. Alton Kansu says, they should also make laws that allow referendum. Thank you for all your feedback. Even though we're unable to read all of them out, we love hearing from you. Keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Tubosu wants to tell us the Nigerian brand. Any bias? You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Branding and perception are connected in ways worth exploring. The brand Nigeria is badly damaged. It must be rescued. You see, when Cardi B visited Nigeria last week, the social media was agog with her reaction and love for Nigeria. She was everywhere. One of her posts clearly showed she was in utmost surprise. She must have thought Nigeria was a terrible bleep hole of a country. Is our situation that bad? Oh, it's very bad. But who is promoting the part that is good? Who is promoting the Nigerian entertainment? Who is promoting the Nigerian food? Who is promoting the Nigerian culture? Who is consolidating on the good things about the great country, Nigeria? South Africa, Rwanda, Dubai, just to mention a few, are constantly and consistently promoting their country in good light. Even when you have the xenophobic attack in South Africa before you say Jack Robinson, they're in Nigeria, promoting travel to South Africa. Dubai never seems to cease on promoting Dubai. Rwanda had a massive deal with English Premiership, which we love very much in Nigeria. So the question is, why do they sponsor these movies? They sponsor our movies, they sponsor our weddings, they sponsor our concerts, just to show that they are good and everyone, at least to a reasonable extent, can come to their country. Just one movie got people more interested in Singapore, the crazy rich Asians. One movie leapfrogged and got more people interested about Africa, the Black Panther. You see, the US military alone spends about $50 million annually promoting the image of US military. So next time you see a movie from Hollywood about the US military promoting how brilliant and how tactful they are, Make no mistake, there may be some money from the US military invested in that movie. Rwanda's tourism industry contributes about 12.7% to the country's GDP. It's supporting 132,000 jobs in Rwanda. A total of $30.82 billion was spent in 2018 by overnight international visitors in Dubai, a 3.8% increase over what they earned in 2017. Oh, remember we just talked about Nigeria borrowing $30 billion. That's what Dubai is making easy peasy. Well, apples and oranges there. This makes Dubai the city which brings in the most storage dollars worldwide, with Mecca coming second at $20.09 billion. Our entertainment sector is growing so fast, and I'm so happy about that. But why? It's more because of external interest. So there's a reason companies invest in internal and external communications. You see, with internal communications, they promote the vision, the culture, the ideals of the organization. With external communications, which is what most of us will see, they promote the company's brand to external stakeholders, not just customers. What is the vision of Nigeria? What do we want the country to be known as? Things are bad, and we all know it, but we need a push and pull effect. 
We won't wait for things to become perfect before we tell the good stories about Nigeria. The body of expectation sometimes has a corrective ability. We need a collective and concerted drive, especially by our National Orientation Agency or the Ministry of Information and Culture to project the Nigerian brand in good light. There has to be a department saddled with the responsibility of taking complaints from Nigeria also, so that every time we go to the social media to complain about something that has gone bad, someone is making effort to fix it and ensure that the issues of citizen molestation by security forces, poor services from government is prevented and resolved in good time. I know we have Savicom, but Nigeria must be heard and justice must be served. As Nigerians also, we must be ambassadors. We must always act right. We all like Anthony Joshua from his recent victory, but he was resilient and of good behavior, at least so far. And now we're associating with him, even though he claims to be fighting for British. While we're trying to hold government accountable, we must be accountable to ourselves and behave well. You have said it all. <laughs> is that what you have to say? You agree with him? You have said it all. In total. Yeah, you have said it all. So. Yes, okay. Yeah. So what else do you want to add? Well, I mean, I, what I would like to say really is that I, I agree with you. Nigeria really needs to start to understand the power of tourism, how much we can make from tourism. And then maybe when we understand that, we might then start to plow some money into improving certain, you know, um, what would you call it, uh, tourist attractions, or, you know, or create even new ones. Um, you know, like I know, for instance, in my, in the East, Oh, you call it Southeast now. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. In, in the East, the southeastern right? part of Nigeria. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I still see it as East. But anyway, southeastern part of Nigeria, for instance, especially, I'm talking about my village now. We discovered some, um, we, we have caves, we have yeah, some historical caves. places. And, and the people, the um, elders of the village got the youths together and got them to clean out the cave and now turn it into a tourist attraction. So now they're writing about our cave in our village, you know, oh, which, yeah, exactly. So even something as small as that, you know, you could turn it into a tourist attraction. Yeah. So I think it's about time Nigeria really starts to see that as an avenue for revenue. Mm, I like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Maybe when they are. I like it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm We, we, we <laughs> should, we 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 should, I feel that, you know, one thing that is selling for us, in spite of all our mistakes, is the Nigerian brand. You know, recently, uh, we, I, I think Richard and I saw someone who had set up a stall. This is in the UK now. We went there, but we saw a post called Two Nigerian Boys. Why would they call it that? Because they know that that title that alone name, will attract. Because Nigerians are charismatic. Yeah. So we're already a brand. Food. Even with our naughtiness, we're still a brand. Yeah. So people are always listening to say, what would these Nigerian people do next? So it doesn't take much to get people on board the Nigerian brand because people... I don't know, there's a feeling in people that they're waiting for Nigerians to do something. Mm. Because you know, the world An is waiting for Nigerians. Yeah. Even we are waiting. To there's, there's too to much capacity something. here mm. that everybody, all eyes are still watching. So we don't need to do exactly. much to get people to key into the brand. Mm. It doesn't take much. So we need to start to you know, take advantage of that and feel a little, you know, you know where some people like wearing Lagos girls. I mean, feel, feel cool about yourself. Mm. And, you well, know, that's part of promoting the brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but you I, see, I when, when it comes to food and entertainment. Yes, it has to be concerted effort. When you talk about the Dubai Museum today, it wasn't there was nothing Dubai about the museum. Mm. Oh really? Yes, they brought the, a France uh, brand mm. to Dubai. They bought articles from all over the whole world okay. and put and it in it. place. Mm. So when and you get there, when you get there, you can replicate the word in Dubai. As that's, simple that's as that. And so you use it to sell it's Dubai. Mm. And, and so that's why I always have a problem with um, Ekene when she concludes to say, <laughs> uh, you know, individually we have to do something. Okay. Yes, individually you know we have, individually, individually we have donated our rights to a, col a government yes, in a respect to collectively, you know, protect and do this. So you now for abdicate us. all responsibilities. No, to that the like this promoting this brand. You see people among in Germany. All these are individual <laughs> efforts. Yeah. Okay. He talked about, you know, government intentionally, mm -hmm. you know, promoting and mm -hmm. pushing the brand. Delivered. Dora Kuile, God rest her oh, soul. Oh, yes, she had She that. tried to promote yeah. the great Nigerian people, brand. Good people, great nation. Good people, great nation. Mm. Yeah, that was just a slogan. Mm. But you can key into, look at the, the Nollywood, for example. Mm. 
fantastic. Yeah. A lot of people now know Nigeria because, because of knowledge. Of knowledge. But what is government industry, doing mm, to keep to tap mm, into that? To tap into but that. sorry, uh, what Libras, is let me let me try and defend into? my position. This is government let, let, is providing let, loans. Let me let me let me yes, defend yes, my yes, position yes. a bit. I, I'm not saying no, that. I, I'm not I, saying. I, I know you know what I, I'm saying. But let me just say, Cha. You know, I I feel that yes, the government. The reason why I try and major on us is because I just feel the government seems so far away, and are they even paying attention? The people who are listening, let's at least do something for ourselves. When you do that. They will be so laid back. They already laid back. Mm. They say anyway, the people will do something for themselves. Yeah, so exactly. Let's just, let's just have yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with Libras. We we need the support of the government. Yeah. You know, like uh, to create these uh, tourist attractions. Is, we're not going to be the only ones. The roads leading to these tourist the attractions need to be sorted yeah, out. Exactly. The security, exactly. the security, yeah. security. Yes. exactly. The maintenance. All these things mm. are required. So you and I can wear the t-shirts all we want, but if people can't even get to the venue mm. or get to these places. And even but, have okay, a good okay, time and like for instance, I was driving down the I was driving down the road the other day mm. and I saw a man open his window, just throw one rubbish out. Mm. Okay, that's, that's an ambassador for Nigeria. No, I no, but, but just imagine, so just like imagine the slogan. Just imagine the slogan. Northern Nigeria, the land where the sun never sleeps. Uh, are you already mm. a brand ambassador? You know? no, we already have some. Yes, we already know they carry last. Yeah. Like, Enugu, it's, it's, it's uh, almost Kosi, like this. Yeah, Anabra, you know, what is it? You know, Something so about light. When you, people, the, the, the Western world are looking for sun, where to come. Just used to be a tourist center. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On security. security. Like it was very dull in the UK now. Mm. <laughs> it's sad. It's sad. Um, as citizens of Nigeria, whether we like it or not, our identity is inextricably linked to the brand Nigeria. So let's make it work. After the break, Liborius nails the coffin on an apparently costly and ineffective practice. A costly practice that only services a very minor segment of the society at the expense of the majority should be confined to the rubbish dump whose security vote help you or me. With reference to a recent report published by Transparency International titled Camouflage Cash, How Security Vote Fuel Corruption in Nigeria. In Nigeria, the word security vote only means one thing to some people, official corruption and abuse of power. Yet the beneficiaries of security votes, politicians and security officials, argue that they needed to subsidize the oppression of Nigeria over stretch and underfunded federal security. As a result, Security votes have become a cancerous tumor in our state budget, unaccounted for. Transparency International, in that same research, re estimated that the secretive, unaccounted for cash expenditure add up to over 241 billion naira annually. The analysis of 29 states' budget, no data exists for seven though, revealed that this state spent an average of 208.8 billion naira in each total year on security vote. Just type security vote on Google and what Wikipedia will reveal to you will give you sleepless nights in a poor country like Nigeria. Kindly permit me to look at some of the figures states by states. Imo state, 4 billion naira annually. Enugu state, 7.2 billion naira annually. Anambra and Abia, 10 billion and 8 billion respectively annually. No record is available for Eboi. White Cross River states is 6 billion naira annually. River State is 18 billion naira annually. Akwai Bomb and Edo are 21 billion and 10 billion respectively annually. Delta State, the state with the big heart, is 24 billion naira annually. And no record available for the oil rich state of Bayesa. Lagos State is less than the oil rich state with 17.14 billion naira annually. Ondo State spends 7.2 billion naira annually. Oshu State is 4.8 billion naira, while Ogun State spends between 960 million to 1.2 billion annually. A kid state, state that couldn't pay salaries under PDP fire share spends 1.2 billion annually as security vote. And I'm not aware if that has reduced under the current fire me, fire me APC government though. Borno state is 9.6 billion annually. No wonder Boko Haram will never come to an end. The three states of Yobe, Taraba and Bauchi spent 3.8 billion naira 2.4 billion and 17 billion naira annually, respectively. Kaduna State spends 4.8 billion naira annually, divided into 2.1 billion as security votes and 2.7 billion security vote preventive and supportive for the office of the SSG. That should be that should be to compensate those whose cow were rustled or killed. Kasina State 
spends the lowest so far. It spends about 211 million annually, while Zamfara spends 7.2 billion annually. Benue State spent 37 billion with about 3.09 billion as uh, amounts allocated to personnel and over costs annually, all of this. Quara has no available records. Plateau, Kogi, and Nasara State spent 2.6 billion annually, 4.8 billion and 1.2 billion, respectively. While lastly, Niger State spends 15.7 annually. Surprisingly, the amount spent is not dependent on insecurity in the state. I might be wrong. I beg help me check and too. With all of these amounts, our police is still heavily and seriously underfunded. My advocacy for today is that to stop this drain pipe, the federal government through the National Assembly must pass law outlawing security vote because this vote money and monies spent by the governor on insecurity unaccounted for, both at the federal level and at the state level. Such laws should also specify budgeting procedures and criteria for security expenditures. Finally, government should support state government's effort to set up security trust fund, which must be professionally managed, just like you have in Lagos states, as a constructive first step towards phasing out security votes. For it is only transparency in fund management that will enhance accountability that can only help in fighting corruption in Nigeria. Yeah, well done. Wow. I'm so glad oh, that God. somebody finally raised this security. I mean, people talk about it, but when you break it down with the figures that you've, you've attached to it per state, I'm disgusted, really, you know? But my problem now lies the people that are chopping from this are not the people that are going to change this. So I think looking at what we could do going forward, I think we have to now push for transparency, push for, you know, we want to see budgets, how these things are spent, because I can tell you that this thing is not, they're not going to no. wipe it out. We're not going to get transparency. They're not going to, no, but they have because to give us something. You, it is security. And security okay. is right. always it's a clear. name for hiding things. Yes, yes you, but you, if the, there's still massive insecurity in the states all around us, shouldn't we then say, oh, okay, you got the security money, but we're all still afraid, we can't move around. Yeah, that's a so, chance to ask so for more money. Us what, what you are spending, spending this money. I think we have every right to ask mm -hmm. that. Um, so I, I, you, you don't think or what? Uh, <laughs> I, I actually, I'm very perplexed at just normally. <laughs> yeah, so so I'm, 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 I'm even trying to find my words because I'm like, I mean, look at Delta State. You really need to find your words. Mm. It's like a you know, like, the yes, yeah, ben, and I'm like, ben you, and I'm like, so, so, please, what is the security vote? Because to a reasonable extent, I have a fair idea of what that money is used for. Okay, go on. But I I do, yes, yeah, I have a fair idea. Please tell us. Please tell us something. No. I just, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. I just did not think that it was going to get. So you see, when you, when, um, this is what they use for um, a lot of, the government official use for what I'll call um, extra extracurricular activities. Yes, and takeaways. Uh, okay. Um, so As that's thirty-seven billion no, no, no. takeaways. So, yeah, so what so are we talking seeing, about? <laughs> seeing the number at thirty-seven billion. So I'm asking that's myself. That's crazy. So that's the takeaway. And then to a reasonable extent, I also hear that. So sometimes they also there are um, unwritten rules about how the money is shared. Mm. So, you know, so it's, it's called security for. vote. Yeah. So yeah. it's called security vote. So there is a commissioner of police in the state. There is maybe a um, maybe a GOC or this ones and all of that. So mm. sometimes it actually goes a bit into something called security, at least from the information that I have. However, there is almost, at least again from what I know, zero accountability. Wow. Uh, 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 you know. Can I say but something? But yes. I will go back to my first statement. Never, I have never you didn't know seen this kind of the level number of where this pilfering huge, was going on. Like, yeah. You know, can I have said something about trust the other time? Mm. You know, you want, for a government, for example, to be able to raise revenue, you need the people to trust you. It's one of the problems we're having with taxation. Yeah. Because people will like to ask, what did you do with the taxes? Mm -hmm. I already pay you. Can mm -hmm. I see it? So when you come and say, pay me more taxes, people mm -hmm. will ask questions. Mm -hmm. Now, these are issues that deplete the trust capital totally. Completely. You take 37 billion naira. Imagine that. You, you, you are not accountable to anybody wage. for it. Minimum wage we're dragging. Benue was owing salary for several oh. months. It's this. And it could, you see, it could, it could, oh, sorry. No, I, you know, in a way, I want to thank Libros, even though it's stomach churning to hear these figures. It's, it's horrible. But I'm, what I'm saying, and I, again, maybe it takes it back to Shore for me, is that 
how can anybody incarcerate him for using the word revolution? That's exactly what we need. Because when you're looking at a spread like this, you're not going to get people who are reasoning like this to do anything productive. They may give you a little here, a little there, but they're not inclined to do anything yeah. productive. It's even better to set them aside, pay them a stipend, and get some technocrats to do the job. Because these people's head will not be this in the kind job. of money. Their head is in what this they can this take kind of from money the, that stops the, the you public from purse. It will acquire so terrorism. Sorry, there's nothing you're saying. Yeah, you're no, fortunate. I can sponsor, that, that I can sponsor, sponsor are problems to ensure I, 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 I will surely say that I won't say anything on this. But the fortunate part is that this is not the budget, the security budget for the states. No, it's just. Ad this hoc. is a vote for the governor. governor. Okay, apart from the security, apart budget. from the budget for security. So, so how do they define this? Is the just use of a that vote. Money? How do they define? It's, a, it's pocket it's money. They don't account for anybody. For that. Yeah, it's that's an why accounted I... for. Mm. So who's brought this? Nobody who brought will this query into you. Law? Who, who allowed this? Nobody to will. It was introduced under Abbasanjo. Nobody will query you for spending mm. security yeah, vote nobody. anyhow. So it's mm. constitutionally there. Yes, you know, it's your vote. The law allows it. You can't be queried for it. And and so when you have this kind of money, careless in somebody's hands and then you want him to leave I wonder why they even brought it yeah. in the first place. I mean, the, the kind of wealth we encourage sponsoring of yeah, yeah, but you see, the, sec and the security vote reminds me of the constituency projects as well, where, you know, they, they give certain amounts to con con uh, constituency projects. And then, meanwhile, people are busy commissioning borehole no, or, or shoemaker. Shoe oh, yes. Yeah, you know, sewing machines. So yeah. 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 You know, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 A lot of these things need the to be scrapped. The money is driving the people, this, this not, are the, not the other way around. Depleting the trust mm -hmm. capital yeah. and why people cannot trust government. Exactly. So we need more transparency. It's not even that we're saying don't have the security vote. We need more transparency. <laughs> well, you've said it all. So with that, we'll call it a wrap. So much to say and so little time. Keep the conversation going on, however, on our Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate on NG. Or on Twitter, like they say, and Instagram, at plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocates. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next time, when we'll be returning with fresh topics for your inspiration, let's keep advocating for a better society. Yeah. Bye. 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 Tara. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, like fire. a terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news.